Each year in the United States, more than 50,000 people are diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and the majority are women. Thyroid cancer kills about 1,600 people in this country annually. But with proper treatment and follow-up, many patients do very well. Joining the conversation on this critically important topic is endocrinologist Dr. Mac Harrell. Good morning, doctor. Delighted, Christy. Thank you so much for being here, and especially uh, for me, I have a family member who was diagnosed just recently. How, how are people usually diagnosed? What, what do they find? Most times, uh, a patient will feel a lump in their neck, mm -hmm. typically low in the neck, and that'll lead them to go to their doctor, who will then feel the neck more carefully and refer them to a thyroid cancer specialist like myself. And once they're diagnosed, how treatable is this disease? Very. It is? Very. In what sense? Uh, well, the fact of the matter is most people live normal lives <sighs> after being diagnosed and treated for thyroid cancer. That's awesome. Now, we also hear the word hypothyroidism a lot. What exactly is that? Hypothyroidism is when the thyroid doesn't make enough of its main product, which is thyroid hormone. And with that, there, the blood levels of thyroid hormone drop. Th thyroid hormone allows you to keep your weight stable, Correct. maintains the body temperature appropriately, turns the metabolism to the appropriate rate so you burn energy properly. That's why we hear a lot, uh, and sometimes I hear from my friends, I'm gaining some weight, I think I should go check my thyroid. That's easy enough to do. Okay. Very easy. And you know, I was reading this morning, thyroid cancer is three times more prevalent in women than in men. Why, why is that? Do we know? Well, we don't know for sure, but we know that women get all forms of thyroid disease more frequently than men. Thyroid problems are, uh, tend to be female related. And whether it's hypothyroidism, too little thyroid hormone, hyperthyroidism, too much thyroid hormone, or thyroid lumps and bumps, and that's what I take care of. But even though you hear that thyroid cancer, and I know a lot of women would right there be probably very scared, the good thing, like you said, is it's very treatable. Very treatable. And most of the times, people survive and live a healthy life. Exactly. Well, I want you to stay right there because we actually have one very special woman with us this morning, and uh, we're going to meet her. She fought thyroid cancer, and she's got such a great story to tell. We're going to meet her in just a bit. Stay with us. Joining us now is Sharon Vinegrad, who's here to share a very personal story about thyroid cancer. Sharon, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Doctor, thank you for staying with us. Sharon, I know you were diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Yes. When did this happen? I was diagnosed in January of 2012. What, what symptoms were you feeling? Actually, I was having weight gain, and then it turned into weight loss. I had chronic laryngitis, mm -hmm. and I mean 10 weeks at a time and I had trouble breathing. I was out of breath all the time. And this never ob obviously happened to you? No. So you knew something was wrong? Yes. You went to the doctor, obviously? Yes. And then what happened after that? I went to my ENT and, um, uh, several times, and I finally went to a specialist who did a routine checkup, and she found a lump in my neck. Mm. And I had a biopsy done, and it came back that I did have um, thyroid cancer. And then you were referred to Dr. Harrell? Yes. Dr. Harrell, when you saw Sharon, what did you find? What did you see when you examined her? Well, I think I can show you on our model, Christy. Okay, this one here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, this is a model of the inside of the human neck, and I'm going to hold it right up here where it would sit mm -hmm. in its anatomical position. And what uh, the large cartilaginous piece in the middle is, is that's your, that's your windpipe, your voice box, mm -hmm. and wrapped around it low in the neck is the thyroid. And what Sharon had was a little nodule in the left side of the thyroid that you could feel with your fingertips when she swallowed. Okay. And that's such an important part of the exam is to actually have the patient swallow while they're, while they're being examined. Now when you heard the doctor confirm that you had thyroid cancer, and forgive me for asking you this, but were you scared? I was very scared. No one wants to hear that they have cancer. Were you scared you may not make it? Yes, yes, right. I was very scared. In fact, um, when I saw Dr. Harrell, um, we had the surgery two days after my appointment because he had to get me in right away, not because of my condition, but because of my emotional condition. Which was not easy, I'm sure. It wasn't. What were her options, doctor? 
she had uh, the biggest option is getting the right surgery. Okay. And uh, in Sharon's case, the important thing was that not only did we feel her neck while she was in the office, we also did uh, a diagnostic ultrasound while she was there. She actually saw us do it via a flat panel that we have on our ceiling. And we were able to show her that she had little lymph nodes out wide in the neck that also had some thyroid cancer in them. So right then and there, I brought my colleague, Dr. Bimston in, and we planned her surgery while she was watching her ultrasound. Wow. And so uh, we took out not only her thyroid, but also malignant lymph nodes that were in the, in the wide lateral part of her neck. Any misconceptions related to thyroid cancer that you can share with our audience? Well, when you have had your, your appropriate surgery, when you've gotten radioiodine, you're not quite done. Okay. Because in the process of having your thyroid removed for the cancer, you develop a condition called hypothyroidism. That is, your thyroid is no longer there to make the thyroid hormone that your body needs. I see. So, after you've had this surgery and radioiodine, you need to uh, get thyroid hormone every day. And Sharon takes thyroid hormone every single day. For the rest of her life. For the rest of her life. Very appropriately, very religiously at a certain time of day, four hours away from other medications. It has to be taken just so. And the other thing that Sharon does is keeps herself extremely healthy, keeps herself fit so that her immune system is strong. So we treat the hypothyroidism that occurs universally after thyroid removal and we ask the patient to do everything in their power to be as healthy as they can be. You're feeling better? I feel great. I feel excellent. For someone out there that may be diagnosed today, tomorrow, or, or maybe know someone that's been diagnosed, what would you say? What kind of words of inspiration would you give? Because you obviously have a lot more hope today than you did back in January. Absolutely. Well, um, if you don't feel well, I definitely take a proactive approach because it is just so important. Um, we know our own bodies, none like anybody else does. And so you definitely need to take a proactive approach and get it taken care of. Thank you so much for your story and Thank for your you. courage to Thank come you. here. I appreciate it. Doctor, Thank, Thank you, you so much and good luck to you, Thank to both you. of you. Thank you. And if you'd like to get the facts on thyroid cancer, please visit two different websites, thyca.org or checkyourneck.com.